Everyone, thank you for joining the Rebuilders Worship Service. We are now on the series of Living as a Kingdom Citizen. So today we're going to talk about living a life based on God's grace. What? Living a life based on God's grace. Today's title is God's grace is not a concept but power. Let's uh, do some review that the message that we uh, studied, we talked about last week. We talked about the original sin. There are two kinds of sin, right? And there are two kinds of repentance. Since there are two kinds of sin, there are two kinds of repentance. The first type of sin is the sin, the original sin. The original sin is the sin that not believing in God, right? Not believing in Jesus. Having a hostile attitude towards God. The, I took the, I took the uh, Pharisees, for example. The Pharisees did not commit any type of adultery, uh, outwardly speaking, any type of theft. But they, they maintain a hostile uh, attitude toward Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ called them sons of viper. And then, because of original sin, it's not believing in God. You need to believe, if you believe in God, the original sin is resolved. And second type of sin is that personal sins. Okay, you repent, you repent your original sin, you, you believe in God, but there are some sins uh, left in your life that's called personal sins or actual sins, right? Actual sins. And you need to, you need to repent your act, actual sins, not for being saved, but for the glory of God to be manifested in your life, okay? So let's turn to, uh, this is today's message. We are on the series of God, living a life as a, as a, based on God's grace. We're going to look at the passage that uh, is divinely inspired by the Holy Spirit for us to preach to the world and to us is Romans 8. Uh, 37. Would you read it all together? No, in all these things. What? In all these things, we are what? We are what? We are more than conquerors. We are what? We are more than conquerors. The conqueror at that time was emperor. Okay? Emperor. We are more than emperor. We are, we are, our position is more than the emperors at that time. Through him who loved us, through God, who, through Jesus Christ, who loved us. So, he, in Christ, in Christ, okay? You, uh, you are in Christ means that you become a child of God. So you believe in Jesus. You believe in God, then you are, you are in Christ. You are a child of God. You're not a victim of the power of sin because the, in Christ, the power of sin is totally destroyed, totally demolished. So in Christ, you're not a victim anymore. Victim of the power of sin, but a victor, okay? Winner. Victor over the power of sin. Today I want to talk about in, to live uh, your life on the, on the basis of God's grace. You got to know what God's grace is. So we got, I'm going to talk about there are two kinds of God's grace, two kinds of sin, two kinds of repentance, and majorly there are two kinds of God's grace. The first type of God's grace is common grace. Okay, common grace is the grace sovereignly, sovereignly bestowed. Bestow means given. What? Given. The common grace is the grace sovereignly bestowed, sovereignly given in the form of undeserved blessing. You don't deserve it, but God gives you, gives you, gives that to you anyway. Okay, that God gives blessings to you anyway. So undeserved in the form, of, in the form of undeserved blessings and care on the whole human race, okay? This is not a like, like distinctive grace that is given to a particular group of people, but given to the whole human race. Everybody can enjoy this grace. This is called common grace. And there's no di distinction uh, between one person and another. It's, it's unconditional, okay? It's, uh, it's an unconditional blessing, unconditional and undeserved blessings and care on the, on the whole human race. One of the major characteristics of the divine character of God, you know, God, we, we, we sing a song, right? God is good. God is good, what? All the time. And then in, in this common grace, in this common grace, one of the major characteristics of God, which is what? Which is goodness, okay? God's goodness is totally reflected in this grace. And God's goodness is manifested, shown, okay? Shown. Demonstrated, okay? Demonstrated. C 
clearly demonstrated to the mankind, whole mankind, okay? God is so good that God gives blessings to, the, to everybody, okay? To everybody, there's no distinction between one person and another. There are three major aspects of God's common grace. The first is the delay of wrath, okay? Delay of wrath. You know, there are a lot of people think that God shouldn't be angry. Well, gosh, God is angry at sin. You got to know that God is, a, you know, God is angry at sin. God has to be angry at sin. You say, oh, God is, God is, you know, God is a loving father. God is, you know, the, the God, God of love. You know, God should love everything and God shouldn't be angry at all. But you know what? Because God is the loving father, God should be angry at sin. God should be angry because God is God of love. You know, God of love must be angry at something, okay? God, sh at some times. Let's say, let's say you, you have a loving father, okay? And there's a, there's a robber, is, you know, breaking into, breaking into, breaking into, okay? Breaking into, chimipada, okay? There's a robber break into your house to steal something or kill your children, okay? You're a loving father. A loving father, like when you see, when you see, or your loving father is seeing uh, two robbers or three robbers, four robbers like breaking into, breaking through the window and breaking into your house and your children are sleeping and your loving father is so loving that, you know, okay, you're being kind to the robbers. That is nonsense, okay? Because, you, because you, your father is a loving father. He's going to be angry at the, at the robbers, okay? He's going to kick them out because your father is a loving father. So because God is God of love, God should be angry, okay? But there are three major, in, in the three major aspects of God's common grace, there is, the first aspect of, aspect of God's gr common grace is that delay of wrath, okay? Delay of wrath. It is manifested, it is manifested in the, in the, in the lives of Pharisees. When Pharisees, you know, came against Jesus, okay, in, in enmity with Jesus, right? He, they, they maintain a hostile attitude, okay, they, they talk about the, you know, blasphemous things against Jesus, you know what, when they, when they talk about the blasphemous things towards Jesus, nothing happened, okay, why, because the wrath of God was delayed, okay, and God didn't, see, even, even though Jesus, when, at the moment, okay, at the moment Jesus said, sons of vipers, okay, they did not, they did not turn into and became sons of vipers, they didn't go to hell right away, right, because God's wrath is delayed. Now, there are so many people sinning against God. There are so many people like uh, talking about the blasphemous things against God. They are in enmity against God. They, they, have, they maintain hostile attitude towards God even though God didn't do anything harmful. But the, 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 wrath, of, the wrath of God did not, you know, does not come upon them right away because it's, it's, it's based on God's common grace. Second is that God's intervention into the operations of Satan. You know, there are, Satan is working, you know, and then, and then there are human beings are depraved in nature. And human beings are depraved in their nature, okay, deep inside. They are so deep, totally depraved. And the manifestation and effects of man's moral depravity, man's, men are morally depraved, spiritually depraved, mentally depraved, and depravity, they think about the bad things, but, you know, God keeps them from coming out, okay? God is in control of Satan's operations. God curbs Satan's operation, okay? So the manifestation and the effects of man's moral depravity is not permitted to reach the maximum extent of which, is, which it is capable of, okay? The man's depravity does not reach the maximum extent of which it is capable of because God is in control. God curbed the operations of sin. God curbs the operations of Satan. God keeps man, uh, man's depravity to, from reaching the maximum extent. Uh, that's God's common grace. So that the sin will not, will not achieve its end, okay? The power of death, the power of sin doesn't, is not overwhelmingly uh, uh, pre prevalent in the world. You know, there's some goodness you can find because God, 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 God manifests His goodness. God reflects His goodness in the, in the world. Third, God's sovereignty is in, in sustaining His creation to prosperity. You know, even the wicked person plants, plants fruit tree, okay? And the fruit tree will, will produce crops. 
God sends rains upon the wicked and God sends rains upon, upon the good. Okay, it's kind of, God, God is not saying like, you know, the sun shouldn't shine upon the bad people. Okay, the sun only shine on the good people. God, all, God also sends rain upon the bad, upon the good, upon the wicked, and upon the good at the same time. You know, God doesn't, God, you know, this is God's sovereignty is, is being exercised, okay? In sustaining his creation to prosperity. You can, you can eat... You can harvest, you know, you know, fruits uh, in, at, at, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the fall, right? Even though you're, you're wicked, okay? Or, or the wicked farmers, you know, doing wicked things and in hostile relationship with God and in hostile attitude towards God and he plants some fruit tree, but he's going he's gonna to reap uh, crops in the, in the fall. There are the three major aspects of God's goodness being reflected, being manifested in, in the creation. You know, God is so good, good. you know, God, He sent rains, He's in control, and He, 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 he uh, let the sun shine, go, you know, sh shine upon the people, the good, the, the good and the bad at the same time. But now you gotta, you gotta wonder why people do not worship God, even though God's goodness, God's common grace is, is poured out upon people, people in the world. You know, common grace is sufficient for the natural man to be led to be led to be being exposed to the greatness of God. However, the natural man in depravity refuses to worship God. If you you know, just looking at the universe, there are so many stars, right? So many stars. And the universe is like reflecting the inf infinite entity of God. You know, God is right there. He's the infinite. Looking at the universe and looking at the you know storm, even looking at the sea, looking at the, like. Uh, there are so many stars in the sky. You're gonna say there's there should be there should be somebody uh, you know uh, up there. You know somebody like divine, somebody infinite, somebody somebody powerful, so somebody you know omnipotent and omniscient being up there, right? But they don't worship God. Why? You know, lots of people say I need more information. You know, I need to know more to worship God because it's, it's my ignorance problem. But the common grace is sufficient, okay? The common grace is sufficient to worship God. The reason why you don't worship God, or the reason why people do not worship God is not the lack of information. Because in common grace, okay, there's lots of information already out there. Let's turn to Romans 1 says, For his invisible attributes, okay? In, 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 invisible attributes, namely his eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly perceived. What? Have been clearly perceived. What? His invi invisible attributes and his eternal power. You, you can know by looking at the sky, by looking at the universe, by looking at the countless number of the stars in the universe, you can see that, wow, God is eternally powerful and God is good and God is divinely wonderful. You know, you can magnificent God out there, you know? But you don't worship God even though they are clearly perceived even since the creation of the world in in the things that have been made okay in the things that have been made his invi invisible attributes have been clearly perceived okay information there are lots of lot of information and maybe too much information you can looking around and raining coming down you know just uh, stars are sparkling in the sky and you see that wow they, 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 those are those are wonderful things right and you say wow there God must exist but they refuse to worship God he says so they are without excuse okay they are they are without excuse for although they knew God okay people knew God they did not honor him they did not honor him as God or give give thanks to him but they become futile in their thinking their foolish hearts were darkened. Okay, it's not a head problem. It's not a mental problem. It's a heart issue. Okay, it's not a, it's not a head issue. It's not an information issue. The sin is not a, it's not an information issues, issue. Sin is a heart issue. Okay, sin is a heart issue. So common grace, okay? It is not an information issue, but a heart issue. So you gotta, you gotta get your heart changed, okay? But, but the common grace uh, cannot function in that area. So you need special grace. You need, you need, you need, you need, you need saving grace. 특별은 총. 
What will happen when the natural man is exposed to the special grace, okay? So you need special grace, you need, you need saving grace. One of the greatest aspects of the saving grace is that it empowers the believers to repent, okay? Saving grace is there to empower the believers, empower the natural man to recognize, oh, that is sin, not believing in God is sin. I need to believe in God, I need to depend on God to live a happy life. In order to live a happy life, in order to live a, live a joyful life, in order to live a meaningful life, there's a recognition like coming in and then hearts are being melted and say, I need to believe in Jesus, I need to believe in God. That's a saving grace. You're in tears and saying, oh, I need Jesus, you know? You're in tears and saying that I need Jesus, I need God, I need to depend on God. That is not possible without the saving grace, without the special grace, okay? That's, and you're empowered to mortify sin. Mortify, mortify, okay? 죽이다, 죽이다, mortify sin. You need to mortify sin, and then sinners do not have power to mortify sin, because the, the, you know, sinners sin, so you need somebody outside of you. You need to depend on the, on the supreme being to mortify your sin, okay? And the saving grace is given from God to, to, for you to mortif, well, be able to mortify your sin, okay? So when the saving grace comes to you, when the special grace comes to you, you are empowered, okay, to mortify sin. You might say, oh, I don't need the special grace. I need, I want, I like common grace. You know, I don't, I don't, I believe in Jesus. You know, my sin is, my original sin is totally demolished in life because I believe in God. You know, I believe in God. I believe in uh, Jesus as my Lord and Savior. What, 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 what is the necessity, okay? What is the necessity of the special grace? I don't need the special grace. I'm going to live my life uh, like the devil. I'm going to live my life whatever I want to do. Why, you know, the necessity of the special grace in the lives of the, of the believers. Why do you need the special grace even after you are converted, okay? Uh, first of all, I want to talk about, I want to talk about, today, today I was vaccinated yesterday and I got, I took a lot of medicine now, so I, I, I'm, I'm on drug, I'm drugged now. Uh, I was, I was, that's why I, I, I was, an, I, I think I, I, I will not be able to have the, uh, service uh, tomorrow, tomorrow's Sunday, uh, uh, Sabbath, uh, so I, I am recording this uh, uh, now, ahead. Why, why, why do we, why do you need the special grace even though you are converted? You know, after, the special grace is, is necessary even after you are converted. A lot of people, will, first of all, we gotta fix our, 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 our mind uh, concerning the, 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 the uh, grace, okay? What is grace? You know, a lot of people say, I, I have met a lot of people, you know, uh, uh, I have heard a lot of people saying that, you know, I, 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 I was touched by the Holy Spirit, by the grace of God, you know? Unebadatta, right? They say, unebadatta, they are in tears and saying, I am unebadatta, right? Uh, but you got to know that, you know, Grace is not simply a concept. Oh, this grace, God's grace is not a simply a concept. God's grace is not simply a feeling or change of feeling. God's grace is power. Listen to what Apostle Paul is preaching about, the God's, about God's grace. Romans chapter 1, verse 16, it says, I am not ashamed of the gospel. Okay, what is gospel? Gospel is all about the special grace, okay? Gospel is all about, the, about what Jesus has, has done. What, uh, gospel is all about the special, not only the common grace, but also the, but the saving grace, but also special grace. So he's, Apostle Paul is saying, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. For why? The reason why I'm not ashamed of the gospel is that it is what? It is the power of God. The God's grace is not a feeling. God's grace is not a concept. God's grace is the power. Okay, you, gotta, you will be empowered when you're touched by the God's grace, by, by special grace of God. The God's special grace, God's saving grace comes upon you and you're going to be empowered to mortify sin, the sin that you, 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 you fought against and you failed to, to win over, have a victory over, and then you're going to finally be being exposed to God's grace 
God's special grace and you will be able to, able to overcome the sin that you're struggling with for a long time. For salvation, okay, to everyone who believes, to the, to the Jews at first and also to the Greeks. So you got to continue to be uh, exposed, okay, no children, be exposed to the uh, this God's special grace even after you are converted because you are struggling with your personal sins okay for the glory of God in order in order to in order to be exposed to the to the glory of God you need to continue to be be exposed to the uh, the saving grace of God the necessity of the special grace is clearly stated in the first chapter of the Bible okay even after you're converted after Adam was made, Adam was created, okay? God gave Adam the special purpose of his life, okay? We, we, you and I have a special purpose uh, of your life and my life. After God created man is in his own image, okay? In his own image. Everybody, okay? Man was created in his own image, okay? If you go to 2 Corinthians 4 and 4, you, it, it, it clearly states what this image of God is all about, okay? In, in their case, they are the God of this world, the God of this world, right? Satan, the, the devil, the enemy, has blinded, what? What, 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 is, what is he doing? You know, the Satan, satanic figures or devils, you know, do, they do not come to you and say, like, giving, giving, giving you some, uh, you, know, you, know, you know, disasters or anything like that, but their major job is to blind you, okay? Blind you. Don't see Jesus. So don't see the glory of God. Don't like become ignorant of God's glory. Okay. Don't do not know God's glory. That's what they do. Okay. You have, if you're blinded, okay, you cannot see what, where where God is leading you, and then you're blinded. Okay. God is leading you, and you, you don't know where where to go. That's why they are called the lost. Okay. They're lost. The God of this world has blinded the minds of the believers. Keep them from seeing the what? Seeing the light. Okay, look at the sequence here. The mind of the believers from keep them from seeing the what? Light of the gospel, the special grace. Okay, glory of Christ. Christ, who is Christ? Christ is the who, who is the image of God, okay? They lost, the, they, were, they were created in the image of God. They are created in Christ, okay? Adam was supposed to be in Christ and they walked out of Christ and Christ came and now we believe in Jesus Christ. We are in Christ and we become a child of God and that's the original sin, okay? The original sin is demolished in Christ. Why? Why? was Adam made in the image of God. He commanded the man, okay? God, God there's a purpose God, of man's creation, creation of man. God commanded, God commanded the man for his lifelong purpose. God purposed the man to be in God's own image and then God blessed, okay? Verse 28 says, God blessed man. God blessed man and God said, you gotta be blessed, okay? You, you know, your blessings are so important. Unmerited blessings, not by the common grace, but by the special, special grace. So when the special grace comes upon you, you're going to be blessed to mortify sin. God said to them, be fruitful. Okay, in order to be fruitful after you're converted, you got to be fruitful because you are not fruitful because of your sin, your personal sin, your original sin. You're not fruitful, okay? So after you are converted, you got to be fruitful. Okay, that's the what? That's the purpose of your salvation and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion okay you become conqueror you become a conqueror dominion like jibe okay jibe you become a, have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of your over you you have dominion over your time you have a dominion over your life you have dominion of your like teri tongchiza okay you have dominion over your Marriage, you manage your life, okay, as, as, a, as, a, as a successor of God's inher divine inheritance, okay? You become, a, you become an heir of, 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 of God's kingdom over everything, okay, that moves on the earth. 
Okay, what's the purpose of salvation? Being converted. You know, the purpose of salvation is not, not to go to heaven. The kingdom of God has come and you have, you exercise the power that is given upon you. Access the, exercise the power, uh, the, the dominion, uh, 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 ruling power, okay, that is given to you as a daily tongchija, okay? I want to, I want to, I want to talk about, okay, this is the most important uh, theme of this message, okay? Who will receive this special grace, okay? Who will receive this special grace? You are qualified, okay? You're a son of, you're, you become a child of God, you're qualified to receive this special grace. But this is kind of gift, right? Now, salvation is a gift, even though you're qualified. It's like a Christmas gift, okay? Uh, your, your father put a Christmas gift under the tree and say, I give you a Christmas gift. You qualify as a son. Anybody can come and pick up the gift. But what, what you got to do? You got to come under the Christmas gift, okay? Uh, under the Christmas tree and you got to pick up. You got to pick up the Christmas gift by yourself because you believe that God has given you. Or your father has given you the gift. You got to come and claim, okay? Now, even though you are qualified, you, you, you become a son of God, you are qualified to claim the gift, but you don't come and you don't get it, okay? Then how would you claim it? How would you claim the special gift you are qualified to receive? Acts 1 says, but you will receive power, okay? Power, the, the power that is promised by, the Holy, by, by, the, by Jesus Christ, uh, to be bestowed upon the believers. What kind of power is this? The power to, to uh, modify sin. The power to preach the gospel. The power to uh, have victory. Power to have dominion. After you are, after you are converted, and you need power, God's power. Because in nature, you're, you're, you're sinful, but in Christ, in nature you're sinful, but in Christ, you are, you, you are, you are qualified to exercise this power. You will receive power when, you, when the Holy Spirit has come. The power will be yours, okay? You will be able to have dominion, exercise your power to, 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 to exercise your uh, ruling uh, power, your ruling power. You need, you need what, who should, should come? Holy Spirit has come upon you. So if the Holy Spirit doesn't come upon you, you don't have power, right? The Holy Spirit has to come. And then you got you to gotta think about why does the Holy Spirit come over? Upon whom the Holy Spirit will come? You will be my witness, okay? Witness means that you're going to see the glory of God being manifested in your life, okay? You're going to see the glory of God being manifested. You, you know, you're going, to see, you're going to see Jesus walking on, on, the, on the water, or you're going to see Jesus, Jesus performing miracles, you're going to see Jesus like alive and, you know, exercise His power, and you're going to see that. You can be a witness. Oh, Jesus is, Jesus is doing this, and Jesus is doing that. God is so alive in my life. You can say that, right? And in order to do that, you need, you, you need the Holy Spirit to come upon you, okay? And then you'll be witnessing in Jerusalem, not only, not, only, not only in Jerusalem, but also in Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Not only in Korea, you know, but also your, your stories will be told in America or in Europe. And then 1 Corinthians 12 gives the hint, okay? It gives the hint upon whom the Holy Spirit will come, okay? Upon whom this power will come. Even after, after you are converted, okay? Holy Spirit will come and, and empower you. And on what kind of people will, will the Holy Spirit will, uh, will come? And 2 Corinthians 12, 1 Corinthians, I'm sorry. 1 Corinthians 12, verse 3 is, is giving us the hint. Therefore, I want you to understand. This is so important, okay? Therefore, I want you to understand this. No one speaking in the Spirit of God over, say, Jesus is accursed, okay? No one, not in Spirit. When the Holy Spirit comes, what? You cannot say. No, so the saving grace comes, okay? When the Holy Spirit comes to bestow the saving grace, the special grace upon you, you cannot say Jesus is accursed, okay? What is the proof? What is the sign then that you will be able to receive this special grace? It says what? No one can say Jesus is Lord 
except in the Holy Spirit. When Holy Spirit comes, what's going to happen? You're going to say, Jesus is the Lord. Jesus should be the Lord. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus has to be the king in my marriage. Jesus has to be the king. Jesus has to be the Lord in my life. When you have that kind of attitude, okay? It means what? Saving grace is ready to be bestowed. And upon whom the, uh, you, you know, uh, 성령 없이는 와 누구든지 예수를 예수를 주로 고백할 수 없는 주라고 할수 없는 이런 okay right so the 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 biggest uh, you know the, there are a lot of signs you know the, uh, the of the Holy Spirit coming upon somebody okay the major sign okay the major sign the major proof that you will have the Holy Spirit okay uh, 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 coming uh, come you will have the Holy Spirit come upon you and then exercise his power to bestow the special grace upon you so that you can modify your sins and you can have a victory you can become a you can you are, you, you, you 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 exercise what you qualify to do is that the, you have this kind of attitude you got to have a, this kind of attitude that is what Jesus has to be lifted up okay the name of Jesus has to be lifted up in my life Name of Jesus has to be lifted up. Not me, not me, not in, not, it, not, not me, but your name has to be lifted. Not my wife, not my husband, not my, not my son, not my child, not my daughter, but your name has to be lifted up, okay? Your name has to be worshipped. Your name has to be lifted up. Okay? The Jesus who was crucified for me, okay? The name should be lifted up, not, not, not in this form, you know, Jesus being tortured in, in your life, okay? Jesus being like the suffering in your life. Oh, he stopped sinning, okay? Not that thing, but Jesus, your name should be lifted up, okay? Upon those people who say, what? Jesus, your name should be lifted up. They say, what? I want to see, I want to see, I want to see Jesus lifted high, okay? I want, I want Jesus to look good. I want Jesus name to be worshipped in my life and th that kind of people you know okay when you say that I want Jesus to lift it up Holy Spirit should come upon you okay because Holy Spirit was was sent to lift up the name of Jesus not to heal you not to cure your disease but in the midst of your disease or in the midst of your suffering in the midst of your pain painful life anything that goes in your life you say oh Jesus be lifted up okay oh Jesus your name should be lifted up and what's going to happen the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit will come upon you and exercise his bestow the special grace upon you special gr grace will be poured on those who are willing to put their faith in Jesus and lift up his name. Oh Lord, oh Jesus, please, your name should be lifted up, okay? Now, claim this special grace in your life. I don't know what, you, what, what you're going through now, but in the midst of what you're going through, pray to the Holy Spirit. Father, Holy Spirit, please, let the name of Lord be, be lifted up. Whatever it is in my life, uh, what I'm going through, this and that, but Father, please let the name of Jesus be lifted up and you'll be empowered. Thank you. Let's pray.